This piece is for the Zoroastrians of Iran and especially the Zoroastrians of Kerman. Mostly concerning those folks, but it will it does apply to in general to most of the Zoroastrians from Iran. Here's the thing, folks. The most important thing, the most important word that I can come up, up with regarding the welfare of a group, of a society, of a community, the most important word that one can come up with regarding the welfare of a community is responsibility. Responsibility is the most important word in the English language concerning the welfare and well-being of a community. It doesn't matter what size community, a small community, a family, a, a extended family, a city, a country, a nation, the planet. The most important word regarding the welfare of these communities, large and small, is responsibility. Responsibility. If you take responsibility at heart and you make sure you do your job, you do your piece of the work, your, your duty towards others, be it your, your siblings, your parents, your extended families, niece, nieces, nephews, uncles, aunts, and your responsibility towards the larger community, the Zoroastrian community. If you do your part towards that, everything will be fine. If you do your responsibility, if you do whatever you have to do, whatever you can do to help out as a responsible person, then everything will be fine. Here's, here's how it works out, folks. When I say responsibility, uh, I remember a story a friend of mine told me. Uh, I have a friend who's who plays piano. He was approached by the Zoroastrian Association of Tehran to go and give uh, piano lessons to Zoroastrian kids and my friend was happy until happy to do so until when he asked the manager in charge who had approached him uh, how much is the pay the manager in charge was a bit set back and he said oh uh, we were expecting you to do this for free you know as a favor to the Zoroastrian community Now you have to understand that my friend is, he's quite young, he was quite young, and at the beginning of his working life, and he needs to make money, you know, to make ends meet, prosper, whatever. So he's not in a position to provide his services free of charge. Uh, Generally, he's not in. He he's not available to provide his services free of charge. It doesn't make any sense, unless he was obligated to do so. Here's the thing, folks. Here's my point about responsibility. Unless my friend was obligated to do so, that is, how is that? How is that possible? How can you obligate people to? provide some services for free is when you tell people that you have all of you have to give some of your income towards this cause to this community all everyone 
every member who's making a living has to give some of part of their income towards this community, towards the welfare of this community. Only in that case, you can turn around and tell to a person such as my friend that, okay, instead of you paying us 10% of your income towards the welfare of our community, you instead of that, you can come and teach piano to the children, to the Zoroastrian children. And that would have been great. That, that's the way to go. And I'm sure my friend would have been, uh, would, would have uh, cooperated because he would have seen that this is instead of that. Instead of giving 10% of my income to the Zoroastrian community, I will go and give 10% of my skills. 10% of my time and skill for the welfare of the Zoroastrian community. Now, here's the thing, folks. In actual fact, if you go back a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years, maybe at the beginning there was no question of giving any percentage of your money towards the Zoroastrian community. You were paying taxes to the government and the government was giving it to the uh, religious institutions part of your taxes was going to the religious institutions that's one that's one issue the other issue is even if you go farther back go farther back go back to the cavemen a little after the cavemen a small villages each member of those communities had to provide some of their services to their fellow men each member of those community imagine a village 10,000 years ago, a small village in central Iran. The money wasn't invented. The money was not invented. Let's assume we are going so far back. Each member of this village, in order to be considered as a part of the village, had to provide some of it, their, his, his or her services to the other villagers in exchange for being part of the village protection that the large number of villagers provide against thieves and robbers and whatever that community and the, the fact that when he needs something the rest of the villagers have to chip in and help so even when you go as far back as the caveman or the small villages right after the caveman era you will see that in order to be part of the community everyone has to give something to this community for the community to be able to survive prosper if, if we say, no, we want to be part of this community, but we don't want to give anything, or we want to give whatever we want, however much we want, with no, with no regards to numbers and percentages, uh, then people start giving less and less and less and less. Because it, it, it becomes a sort of like, uh, a, 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 a race into who can give less and take more so the best way to go about this to create this sense of responsibility understand that this is our responsibility taking care of this community our community is our responsibility the Zoroastrian community nobody is taking care of the Zoroastrian community except Zoroastrians so if you want to be part of this community Either you have to provide your 10% of your skills and time if your skill is needed. Here's the thing. I'm all for not giving any money. As long as we can use all the skill of every Zoroastrian all over for the welfare of the Zoroastrian community, great. You don't have to give anything. If you have a skill that Zoroastrian community needs, you give 10% of your time and your skill and you don't pay anything. But the problem is most people's skills are not needed for the Zoroastrian community. So they, 
what what the, in reality they they have to go and work so whatever they, their job is wherever they they work at but bring back give 10% of their income instead of 10% of their time they have to give 10% of their time for the welfare of this community instead we say okay we don't need your skills give us 10% of your income for the welfare of this community, to keep this community together, for the welfare of this community, for the prosperity of this community. It's quite simple, folks. You look at it another way. This happened in my family with my sister, so I'm very well aware of it. If a father hasn't given a damn about the Zoroastrian community all his life, not a damn or a dime, if a father hasn't given a damn or a dime for the Zoroastrian community, most importantly because he was not expected to do so, by the community, by the leaders of the community. Nobody asked him for a dime, a percentage of his income, or a damn. When a father does not give a damn or a dime all through his life to the Zoroastrian community, towards the Zoroastrian community, towards the welfare of the Zoroastrian community, the community that he was born in how and this shows the amount of responsibility that he's taken for this community understand that giving a damn or a dime when you give a damn or a dime towards your community that means you care that means you are showing responsibility You're showing responsibility by giving money, by giving a percentage of your income. That's how grown-ups, adults, working adults show responsibility. They give money, time or money. If you have time, the Russian community can use your skill. Great, give your time. Most of our skills are not needed for the, for the immediate use of the Russian community. So the next step is give your money. When you give a percentage, 10% of your money to the Zoroastrian community, this is how you're showing responsibility towards this community. This is how you're showing responsibility towards this fucking community. If you're not giving a damn or a dime or time towards the Zoroastrian community, you're not showing responsibility. Question is, why would such a father expects 20 years down the road expects his daughter to show responsibility towards the Zoroastrian community and marry a Zoroastrian or his son when a father has never shown responsibility towards the Zoroastrian community by not giving his time his money towards this community because especially because he was not expected to by this community the community doesn't the leaders of this community don't expect people to pay this is what I'm saying they should if you want to keep the community together you have to expect people to pay you have to ask for the money hey Joe Hassan John you're Zoroastrian, you have to pay 10% of your income to the Zoroastrian community, period. Once you get people, start, start people putting money into this enterprise, into this community, then you will see they will start to care. You cannot put money in something and not care about it. This is what I'm saying, it's a cycle. You ask for money, they put money in, 
they take responsibility, they put money in, and then they start caring because they're putting money in it. You don't know anybody, I don't know anybody who's got a bank account and puts money in it, saves money into it, puts money into it, and never checks it, checks how much has accumulated. I know people who put money, who save money in their bank account and check it every every day, see how much it has increased overnight, maybe something a little. It's a joke. That, that's that's how it is. You are the leaders of the community. The community itself has to expect its members to start chipping in, putting. Put a number on it. 10% of every member's income has to come into this community for the prosperity of the community. And that's responsibility. Every member of this community, if they want to be part of this community, they have to take responsibility and pay. Time or money. Some, whichever one we need from each individual. If we need their skill, great. Bring their skill. If we don't need their skill, you have to give us 10% of your time towards the welfare and prosperity of the Zoroastrian community. Only in that case, when a father has done that for 20 years, given his time or his dime, his money, to the Zoroastrian community, only after 20 years of doing that, he can expect his children to take responsibility and stay within the Zoroastrian community. Don't break up the community. A father can tell his son or his daughter, hey, I have put in 10% of my income every year for the past 20, 30, 40 years. I expect you to carry this tradition. I put money in this fucking thing. I don't expect my children to walk away from my investment. The key word here, folks is investment when you expect people to give a percentage of their income into this community you're asking them to invest in the Zoroastrian community once people invest in the community once people are invested in the community there is a fat chance they will walk away from the community when people invest anything time or money time is money into anything they want they will not walk away from it so easily they rather give the life than walk away from it and here is the point Zoroastrians are coming apart numbers decreasing a small community which can be a very prosperous community together together not individually individual is shit individual is nothing millions are born millions die individual is nothing the group the concept is the group the community when the community is prosperous every individual is prosperous 90% of individuals are prosperous but when the community is poor, 5% of individuals are prosperous, 95% are suffering. So the concept should be prosperity of the community of Zoroastrians. The community. Examples of it is quite obvious. You just All you have to do is just open up your ears and look around. Those communities where money and time is being invested a percentage a set percentage we're not asking from anybody for anything extravagant no in communities where a percentage of money is expected from its members money or time and their skill whatever those communities each individual member starts taking responsibility for the community because they are now they're invested in it and those communities prosper really well you can look at the uh, community of Christian Mormons in Utah 
the most prosperous state in the United States, the most prosperous community in the United States, prosperous community. You can look at the Jews, the Jews in Israel and the rest of the world, very tightly knit, they take collective responsibility, individual responsibility for the collective prosperity. The key phrase is this, in individual responsibility for the collective prosperity towards co towards collective prosperity and how individuals take responsibility by giving a percentage of their time and skill or if their time and skill is not needed a percentage of their income towards the community that's how you take responsibility towards the community and once people start doing that then the fathers and the mothers can expect their children to take responsibility and keep this community tightly knit and prosperous and stay within this community and if by any chance they want to marry somebody from outside this community they have to, it's their responsibility to bring them in to pull them in convert them into this community make them first part of this community and ask 10% of their income for this community and make them understand that for the rest of their life that individual coming from the outside just like everybody else inside inside has to pay 10% of their income towards the welfare of this community towards the prosperity of this community only in that case they're allowed to marry outside only if they're willing and able to pull people in and make them responsible make them responsible for this community for the prosperity of this community that's the way to go so this idea that no I want to keep my money for myself this translates into I don't want to take responsibility for the Zoroastrian community it's not my responsibility no it is if you want to whatever community you want to be part of is your responsibility you have to take responsibility for that community doesn't matter you want to be part of the uh, part of the Iranian nations nation you have to give as, as a man you have to give two years of your life towards the military service that's part of your responsibility that's part of become, being an Iranian everyone is expected to give as I said time or money if they want to be part of this community now being part being born in a country is not by choice but being a Zoroastrian is a choice if you want to be a Zoroastrian if, if you want us to consider you a Zoroastrian you have to give either your time or a percentage of your money 10% of your time if we need your skill or 10% of your income towards the prosperity of the community again the key phrase and, and Iranian Zoroastrians understand this this has been tested time and time again even the Zoroastrian community of India the Parsis the main reason for their success as a as a collective the reason the main reason for their prosper relative prosperity as a collective as a group is because they have felt the, this responsibility many of them have felt so responsible that they have gone back to Iran as we know I, I attended to one of those to school in one of those buildings they have the Zoroastrians of India the Parsis have felt so responsible that they have come back to Iran and built buildings and schools this and that you see and this is responsibility this is taking responsibility for your community now we have many 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 extremely wealthy Zoroastrians in Iran or originally in Iran now in the United States you have to take responsibility not just you everyone nobody's nobody is telling you give us your wealth no whatever you have accumulated during the years great for you great for your family your income yearly income 
you have to give a percentage 10% of your yearly income towards the prosperity of the Zoroastrian community that is your job that is that is how you take responsibility giving 10% of your yearly income not your wealth keep your wealth for yourself whatever you have income whether you're young you're old you're rich you're poor doesn't matter 10% of the income by giving 10% of your income you show your responsibility towards this community by giving 10% of your income you show your you take responsibility by giving 10% of your income towards the prosperity of this community you show that you're a responsible Zoroastrian in fact you're showing your children that this is what a Zoroastrian as responsible Zoroastrian looks like a father shows his children this is what a responsible Zoroastrian looks like this is how a responsible Zoroastrian acts like gives to the community a percentage of their income a percentage of their time and then the children understand that this is something our family has been invested have, have been investing for years 10 20 30 40 50 60 years we are not we as the children of these parents are not going to walk away from this investment we are invested in this community again folks for the community to survive you have to make folks invest in it you have to make folks invest in it if they don't want to invest in it just fine they have the right to walk away if Zoroastrians some of them don't want to invest in the Zoroastrian community don't want to give any percentage of their income towards the Zoroastrian community fine they can just walk away they don't have they can go and call themselves Zoroastrians whoever they want but as far as the Zoroastrian community is concerned they are not Zoroastrian period you have to cut them off let them call themselves Zoroastrian let them call, call call themselves whatever they want but officially the Zoroastrian communities the Zoroastrian Association should start keeping books on people charts books names and make sure everybody is paying their percentage to keep this community to to make this com community prosper and here's the, the on, on the lighter side when a community is very prosperous in fact the children are inspired by it nobody actually wants to leave this community a prosperous community how many people do you know who wants to leave a rich family and go and live by the road or live in a poor family no if you're if you are part of a very prosperous community you will the children are inspired by it hey this is a very prosperous very classy community very upscale community why the hell would I want to walk away from this community and go slumming with some crappy Muslim guy or a crappy Muslim girl that's the thing a lot of these are being executed a lot of these ideas are being executed by the Parsis of India and this is how they do it I'm sh the Parsis of India are, I have a feeling are very very well organized They're, they they keep books on everybody everybody knows everybody and they keep books on them who's who from which family from where and this is what the Zoroastrians of Iran sh and those who have moved to United States the Zoroastrians in United States should start doing keeping tab on, tabs on people the leaders identifying individuals identifying families identifying jobs incomes more or less estimation we don't we don't need to you know uh, hire a security system an investigative system we leave people to their honor 
but we have a pretty you can guess whoever's job whoever's doing what you can pretty much guess their income what what they're doing where they're working and what they're doing so we have we can guess what is their income and what is what they actually should be paying into the system into the community for the prosperity that's beside the point the point is if you want the children to stay in this community if you want a prosperous community you have to create a sense of responsibility in this community and the main way to create a responsibility in the community is to ask them for money make them invest in the community once they invest they start caring for the community because now they're invested in it and that's what you want once they're invested in it then the next generation will see will actually see that a percentage of their parents income has gone into this community for the prosperity of this community so logically they wouldn't want to walk away from this investment as a family as children of this family that's one thing second thing once the community becomes prosperous well-to-do community they are inspired to stay within this the children are inspired to stay within this community instead of just walking away because where do they nobody wants to go slumming if they are if they can help it the key is the money folks you have to start bringing up this idea of asking Zoroastrians for a percentage of their income the cause the prosperity of Zoroastrians and only in that way we can prevent this drainage this draining of the Zoroastrian people and we can keep a tightly knit community and it's going to be better for every one of us when you have a tightly knit relatively small community of united people of united people they can do amazing things they can do amazing things it's going to be good, better for them for their children as a community is that they, they, they can do great things I mean look at it this way the Jews are 5 million let's say 8 million in Israel by asking people to take responsibility give money and time and skill they have they were able to beat back in in the in this what they call it the six day war or a seven day war they were able to back beat back like six seven Muslim countries who attacked them six seven Muslim countries Egypt and Jordan and uh, who else Syria and they all got to get or uh, they all got together and attacked and Saudi Arabia and they were all many of them even if they weren't giving infantry men they were giving money and uh, and equipment they all attacked a small state like Israel and within six days Israel had them all on their knees this is the power of a small community united community where the system has asked its members to start investing to take to take responsibility and in order to take responsibility that means giving time or money towards the prosperity of the community this is the end result a small numbers can be, be beat back millions of people folks we have to start investing we have to ask our people to start investing that's the only way prosperity for the Zoroastrian community can be achieved